Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the electrical power transmission course. Today I am going to explain about the sag and tension in overhead transmission line. While erecting an overhead line, it is very important that conductors are under safe tension. If the conductors are too much stretched between the supports in a bid to save the conductor material, the stress in the conductor may reach unsafe value and in certain cases the conductor may break due to excessive tension. In order to permit safe tension in the conductors, they are not fully stretched but are allowed to have a dip or sag. The difference in the level between points of supports and the lowest point on the conductor is called sag. Furthermore, the horizontal distance between the two adjacent supports or poles or towers is called span, as shown in the figure. Consider the figure 1 which shows a conductor suspended between two equal level supports A and B. The conductor is not fully stretched but is allowed to have a dip. The lowest point on the conductor is O and the sag is S. The following points may be noted. When the conductor is suspended between two supports at the same level, it takes the shape of catenary as shown in the figures. However, if the sag is very small compared with the span, then sag span curve is like a parabola as shown in the figure. The difference between the two curves is that catenary shape is like a U-shaped curve, whereas parabola curve is a little bit narrow curve. The tension at any point on the conductor acts tangentially. Thus, tension T0 at the lowest point O acts horizontally as shown in figure 2. This is an important consideration in the mechanical design of overhead line. The conductor sag should be kept to a minimum in order to reduce the conductor material required and to avoid extra pole height for sufficient clearance above the ground level as shown in the figure. It is also desirable that tension in the conductor should be low to avoid the mechanical failure of the conductor and to permit the use of less strong supports. However, low conductor tension and minimum sag are not possible. It is because low sag means a tight wire and high tension, whereas a low tension means a loose wire and increased sag. Therefore, in actual practice, a compromise is made between the two. In an overhead line, the sag should be so adjusted that tension in the conductor is within the safe limits. The tension is governed by the conductor weight, effects of the wind, ice loading and temperature variations. It is a standard practice to keep the conductor tension less than 50% of its ultimate tensile strength. It means that minimum factor of safety in respect of conductor tension should be 2. Now I am going to discuss the factors affecting the sag. Number 1. Conductor weight per unit length. The sag of conductor is directly proportional to its weight per unit length. Number 2. Span. The sag is directly proportional to the square of the span length. Longer span gives more sag. Number 3. Tension. The sag is inversely proportional to the tension in the conductor. Higher tension reduces the sag but increases the stress in the insulators and supporting structures. Number 4. Wind. Wind load increases the sag in the inclined direction. Number 5. Temperature. The sag is reduced at lower temperature and is increased at higher temperatures as shown in the figure. Number 6. Tower height. A tower height depends upon the length of the span. With long spans, relatively few towers are required but they must be tall and correspondingly costly. The lightning hazards increases greatly as the height of the conductors above the ground is increased. This is one of the reasons that horizontal spacing is favored in spite of the wider right of the way required. In the end, I am going to discuss another important term used with respect to sag and tension known as stringing charts. For use in the field work of stringing the conductors, temperature sag and temperature tension charts are plotted for the given conductors and loading conditions. Such curves are called stringing charts as shown in the figure. These charts are very helpful while stringing overhead lines. Friends, in this lecture I have discussed about the sag and tension in the overhead transmission line. 
I have discussed the various factors which affect the sag in overhead transmission line. In the end, I have discussed the stringing charts. That's all for today's lecture. I hope you really enjoyed this lecture. Friends, I upload many videos based on various topics of power system and motivation on regular basis. Therefore, don't forget to subscribe my channel in order not to miss my latest videos. And don't forget to share my videos with your friends and class fellows so that they can also get benefit from these videos. Thank you very much.